Attention all humans. In today's video, we'll be learning how to create dynamic health bars for every alien enemy in our game using GDevelop. But hey, this method will also work on other games too, not just those involving pesky aliens. First things first, let's arm ourselves with knowledge. And a huge laser. So let's quickly hop over to the code portion and take a look at what we're starting with. I have a small amount of code here that allows us to, on left click, create a projectile at our mouse's X position, but also at the Y position that's right beneath the map. And then we're gonna scale it up nine times larger so it's big enough to hit multiple enemies in one shot. Next, if the projectile is too far down, we're just gonna add a force to push it upwards. And if it's not too far down, that means it's done and we can go ahead and delete it. And this will keep us from having projectiles floating off in space, literally. Oh, forgot to save. And with that, it looks like we are all caught up. Back to our starting point. Looking at this, we have two different objects. We're using enemy as well as Cthulhu. And enemy's gonna have four different instances. Inside of our objects, we're going to need a new behavior, and we're going to use one that's built by the community. So we're going to have to go to search new behaviors, and we'll type in health and find health points and damage. And once we add that, it'll load in. And once it's loaded, we need to actually add it to our objects we want it on. And we'll end up putting this on both our Cthulhu as well as our enemy. And then next, we're going to want to add the new resource system that is built in. And this will give us built-in health bars to choose from. And we'll go ahead and give one to our boss character. And we're going to make this one larger and more detailed. And then we'll pick a smaller, less detailed one for our smaller enemies. And we would essentially do that the same way, but I don't want to have to do this for every enemy I have. So we're going to find a way to build it in as we spawn enemies into our game. And the first thing we'll end up doing here is creating two new groups. One's going to be for our enemies that are going to have health bars and one's gonna be for the health bars themselves. And under our enemies with health bars, we're gonna have our enemy and our Cthulhu. And under health bars, we'll have both the metal red bar and the red flat bar, or any health bars that you choose. And additionally, we will need something to mark our Cthulhu down as not a normal enemy, so we can give him that special health bar. So I'm gonna go in there and give him a variable, and I'm just gonna call it is boss, and I'm gonna set that to true. And now when I check the enemies with health bar groups, if they have the boolean is boss set to true, I know to give them the better health bar. And since the enemies called enemy don't even have that boolean at all, theirs can never be true, so it'll just be read as false. Next, we'll need a point to create the health bar at, and we can do this by opening up the objects that will have health bars. And under edit points, we can go ahead and create a point for our health bars to spawn on. And I'm looking at the center of the X position and slightly above on the Y position. For Cthulhu, I came up with 28 and negative 14. And for our normal enemy, we'll do the same thing, just on a smaller scale. And I came up with 13, negative 10. And these are both called health bar. And since I'm terrible at remembering how I spelled the last one, I end up using a capital B under my group names and a lowercase b here. And these are all going to be case sensitive, so just keep that in mind. I ended up adding four different sets of code in order to make this all work, in addition to the three little bits you saw in the beginning. So our first bit, we are going to go through and check everything that's already in the scene. So at the beginning of the scene, we're going to loop through each enemies with health bars meaning all of our enemies. So anyone we want to have a health bar, we will go through, pull them out of that group, and we will verify if their is boss variable is set to true. And looking at these two different sets of events, we can see the only difference here is the metal red bar versus the red flat bar. And essentially I just have a check to see if they deserve the special bar. So that's where that is boss comes in. And all of the different actions we have, we're just going to end up creating that health bar then we're going to set it to the X position of zero and the Y position of that point we made. And we set this to zero to start because it's not placed down yet. And we're going to actually take that starting position and make an edit to it 
that's based off of its own stats and it doesn't have those yet. I'm also going to scale this bar up a little bit to make it a bit bigger. And then right under there, this is where I actually set the X position. I can take the point I made called health bar and I can subtract half of the width. Since I don't know how to grab the center of the health bar objects, I just grab the width and divide it by two and move it that far to the left and that automatically centers it over our objects. Next, I'm going to link our enemy with the health bar. This way later on, if something happens to the enemy, I can be like, hey, what is linked to you? Make it happen to that as well. And finally, we are going to set some values into our health bars and we need to go ahead and give it the max health of our enemy. And since we added that health behavior, we can now pull up helpers with health and we can set that to max health. And then we essentially do the same thing, but instead of maximum health here, we're looking at value and we set the current health. And we're just gonna set those both to the max health. So for our Cthulhu, I have 100 and then the enemies, I just have 25. And that takes care of adding the health bar to all the enemies that are already on the map. The next bit of code is going to be the damage that our projectile gives to enemies. And since our projectile can hit more than one enemy in the group at a time, we're going to do a repeat for each instance of enemies with health bar. And then we're going to check for collisions with the enemy from our group. Once we get that, we can use another built-in helper function and we can apply four points of damage to whatever enemy from the group we hit. And if you see here on the end, we have a damage can be reduced by shield and armor. And we aren't using those, but it is a really cool feature. This allows you to add shield and armor to the built-in functions. And then if you wanted to have, say, true damage, you could set the armor to no. And then the armor would ignore all of the resistances. Next, we're going to take into account whatever health bar is linked to that enemy. And we're going to go ahead and change their value. And we're going to set the health bar value to that of the health of our object. So if it just took four damage and it was an enemy, it is now down to 21 damage and the enemy object itself holds that, but we can pass that into our linked health bar. And additionally, I started out with all of the red flat bars, the enemy health bars hidden. And here, if we hit the enemy, any linked red flat health bar will now show. So this will make it so there's no health bar until they start taking damage and then it'll show the health bar. And this next bit of code, while holding down A, we simply create a new enemy object randomly throughout the map. And since these are only the normal enemies, not the boss, the only condition under there is going to be the is boss false. And this is the exact same code as up above. And this allows us to spawn, create the health bar and attach it all at once as we create new enemies. And in the final bit of code, we have one more helper. And this checks if our object is dead which means it has zero health left. And if it does, we also want whatever health bar is attached to the dead enemy. And we're just gonna delete those both. And now there's just one last bit of code in order to make this all work. Since we don't have a time restriction for how often our projectile hits our enemies, we're gonna go and use the built-in one in the behavior. So on both enemies and Cthulhu, make sure you go in there and set some sort of cooldown reduction. And that's it for today's video. If you have any questions, concerns, comments, throw them down below. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Otherwise, peace.